Hello everyone, welcome to another session of Aussie Live. Today we have, or well, this afternoon, we have Shingo Gibson Suzuki, who is a Japanese teacher from Melbourne. Uh, he also is part of the Australia E-Series and, and is a regular presenter on our Thursday night Community Connects. Uh, hello Peggy, welcome. Welcome Anne. Um, tonight, or this afternoon, sorry, Shingo is pre presenting a session called Creating a Flipped Classroom and Providing Feedback Through Screen Recording. And you will really enjoy the practical advice that Shingo has to give us. Um, so thank you, Shingo, for coming. Now, Karen, you can take it from here. Okay, thanks, Ness. First of all, we'd like to thank our sponsors and supporters. Uh, you can see them all there. They're wonderful, wonderful people for bringing this all to us today. Uh, now, let's uh, have a chance and see where we're all from. If we just grab one of the smiley faces or one of the maps and drag it over, you can see that's me over there. Feel free to drag yourself on. You might find if you're on an iPad that uh, it won't go across, but some do, some don't. Great. Thanks, everybody. All right, so handing it over to you. Thanks, Jingo. Okay, thank you. Um, well, good or good afternoon or good morning or good evening, uh, wherever you are, um, you might be listening to this recording. Um, my name is Shingo Gibson Suzuki and um, as I got introduction uh, from this, I'm a Japanese teacher in Taylor's Lake Secondary College, which is in the western suburb of Melbourne. And I'm also um, an e-learning um, coach at the school and, um, and I'll also run a Thursday session on um, the Community Connect on Thursday night from 8 o'clock, so if you are interested in um, getting more, I guess, the ICT tool advice, then come along and join us every Thursday night. Um, well, in terms of what I'd like to go through in this session is um, we're going to start with discussing what is a flipped classroom and what are the advantages, like how is it different from a traditional classroom as opposed to flipping your classroom. And um, we'll demonstrate some of the tools that I use in my class um, as well as outside my class and show a bit of a demonstration. And so it's going to be a bit of a hands-on session. So I'll hopefully for those who are not using um, any mobile devices um, could also have a go um, in your own time as well as in this session to just, just to play around. And I also like to go through about providing feedback using the screen recording tools. And when I um, thought about using the um, presenting in a flipped classroom, I thought, well, I can actually um, incorporate providing feedback in the same thing because it's uh, using the same tools. So rather than just kind of stuck on one concept, I thought I might um, widen the bit of a horizon. And um, so I'll go through a bit of a demonstration session but before we start, what I would just want to do is you can either chat, and I'll put in the chat uh, window, or you can um, say what it is that you might be doing in your own time. So um, if I could get people to just write in you know, a chat box your educational background, and so I can have a bit of idea of what everyone's background is. And I know um, a few people in here, so... If I could just um, quickly write down what your educational background is. And welcome Ian. Uh, Ian, if you can just um, chat it, um, put in the chat box what your educational background is. And obviously I'm going to be talking from the point of view of Japanese teacher in a classroom and I'll try to facilitate everyone in terms of um, if you're a certain subject teacher and um, might be able to give you some bit, bit of advice as to what you can actually do um, when it comes to flipping your classroom. Um, and the good thing about flipping um, classroom is that it can 
be used in any setting, so from primary school to secondary school to tertiary. Okay. Okay. Now, um, can I just have a show of hands and uh, using the yes no um, button? How many people have a vague um, concept of what the flipped classroom is? Please, I guess yes. Um, now, Penny, would you like to say something or is it a um, hands up? Just drop the mic. I can go. Um, I, I believe a quick classroom is where you hand over the, um, I suppose, the, the research opportunities to your students to find the answers to the question rather than standing up the front talking and talking at your students. Okay, good. Um, there are a few others who have said uh, you know what uh, which classroom is. Now, I heard, I think it was Peggy. And who said uh, she's a big advocate for flipped classrooms? Could you just share, us, share with us what your knowledge um, of flipped classroom is? Maybe she's typing, or are you able to talk on the mic, Penny? Okay, um, maybe she comes back later on. Um, okay, so let's just go through a bit of a very, very brief explanation um, of what flipped classroom is. So basically to flip your classroom generally means to deliver new content to your students outside of your normal class time through video tutorials. So that is very, very easy. And um, also the class time can be used for further clarification and discussion. So um, for example, you might be um, teaching uh, a language and it can be for um, particular grammar structures that you want to be teaching to your class. However, it might actually be taking a lot longer um, in the actual physical classroom. So you might be recording your instruction or explanations and you get the students to watch that particular video. And um, in a classroom, you might be using as a, an actual practical application of the knowledge that students may have acquired from the video. So in terms of flipped classroom versus a traditional, so in terms of traditional, let's have a look at traditional classroom. So in classroom, um, instruction happens and teachers at the front, they just go through and they explain certain things. So for example, with the, the maths and or science, they go through the step-by-step -step approach on how to do certain things. It could be experiment, it could be a formula, and with my language class, it might be to do with how to put the sentence structure together, or how you form a sentence. Um, and then they go home and they apply their knowledge and understanding at home, which is the homework. Um, now, the, I guess it's not, not so much an issue, but the, the big hurdle we as teachers can face is that when the students don't have um, enough knowledge to take home and apply that, then they are unable to apply the knowledge, therefore their the homework is not done or may have done in a very uh, incorrect way. And they come back and the student asks questions and they have to um, fix things. So um, it can be, I guess, a longer process and to flip the classroom. Um, so in terms of the traditional ones, it's very, very, I guess, one way and when the students have any issues at home, um, conventionally, it's not very possible to actually ask questions. So let's have a look at what the flipped classroom is. So basically, it is flipping. The instructions happen outside of class. So instructions are delivered through a form of video tutorial. And um, it can, the students can watch it in, in their own time, and they watch it, on, they watch it so many times and until they understand the concept. And in class, they apply the knowledge and understanding. And as a result, it can enhance the discussion. So for example, in my class, um, I don't actually flip classroom um, every single lesson or every 
topic we do. Um, I do with my year 12 um, Japanese class simply because there's so many grammar patterns that they need to get through. If I go, if I use my class time, then it is impossible to go through and for them to actually understand in the class. So what the what my students do in my class is that they apply what they have learnt in and a practical manner. So it could be speaking, it could be writing, or it could be reading, or it could be listening. So that way, um, they already come to my class with the, the prior knowledge. Um, now, are there any questions so far in terms of um, flipped and traditional? So that was fairly um, easy to understand in terms of what the difference is. And give me a little uh, and then smiley face if you can. Okay, good. Now, so what are the advantages of the flipped classroom? An um, advantage that I found in my class is that it, is, it offers the ability to differentiate so students can learn at their own pace. So it means that um, the, the slower students can actually take a lot longer and they watch over and over again, they might pause, they might go backwards, and they might just have to go to a certain point, and they play over and over again. Now this can also assist the um, slower students and sit down with their parents. The parents can be involved in this um, learning process at home because a lot of the issues with the language teacher, um, someone uh, like say um, Jan, I know Jan is a Japanese teacher, um, the, I guess the biggest issue with the Japanese class or any language class is that um, parents are somehow limited in terms of their ability to help. So that way, um, by flipping the classroom, by providing the instruction out of the classroom, um, the parents can actually be involved in the student's learning, which I think is an important part of student's learning. And also next one is the, the cages for different types of learners. Now with the video tutorial, it's audio, uh, you can see it visually, and when they come back, it, they can apply the knowledge in a kinesthetic way. Um, so it can cater for all different types, whereas if you are, uh, for example, Japanese DJ, then um, explaining in front of the class, it's all just words, or it might be um, um, the audio as well, but once the audio has passed, then the students kind of go back to it. And the only way that they can qualify is ask questions. And that can actually st um, stop the process of actually going through. So um, all the advanced students, they have just have to be sitting there and waiting for the next instruction, which can be quite frustrating for, say, a gifted or advanced learners. Um, the next one is the teacher in class becomes a guide rather than information provider. Now what this means is that um, in the traditional classroom, um, when the teacher is explaining things, they provide the information and the students write down the information. In the flipped classroom, um, students can be watching a um, particular the video tutorial and they the, the teachers can be just guiding through that yeah, let's have a look at this one because it's um, did this make sense? Now let's actually try this particular activity. So the teacher is actually becoming less of an instructor. And it also frees up um, class time for more hands-on activity and sessions. Now um, think about uh, science classroom. Now, um, Penny can probably tell you all about science classroom where she has to go through all the safety issues and step-by-step uh, -step on how you do it. Um, if the students are aware of what is actually happening, then or beforehand, when they come to the lab, they are able to apply the knowledge in a practical manner, which I think is very important. And the same as in, in, in Japanese, or it could be in English as well. And uh, this one is enhanced advanced learners. Now with the advantage of a quick classroom is that once you create a video tutorial, it's there, which means you can just keep uh, reusing or you might um, change the content um, every now and then, but it's there, which means uh, for the advanced students, which I'm pretty sure we all have, um, they can just move on to the next task or next grammar patterns in my case, 
and they can just keep going and if they have any questions they can come up and ask you. So it's a great way for advanced learners to just keep going and I guess be advantaged. And also the less advanced learners can rewatch the video for qualification, which is a great for um, say students who are struggling and they want to ask you the same question over and over again. And we as the classroom teachers have probably have experienced, um, oh, I'm sorry, can you, um, can you explain how to do this again? And often you have to sit down with that student and go through what is actually required to um, to complete the task. And what I have actually discovered last year when I started using the video tutorial is that for the students who have been away or for the, for the students who didn't understand the initial time, they can actually watch it again and then they'll come back to me if they have any issues. So that um, has become very, very easy and I've I found the lesson that students are actually asking me questions because they just automatically refer back to the, the video tutorial. And in the, the age of digital age, um, it's very, very easy to share the video um, using the shared drive. Um, about five, ten years ago when we didn't really have the Dropbox or um, Google Drive, we had to use USB. The USB can be um, very fiddly when it comes to that data transfer and you can only pass it on from one student to one student which is um, quite frustrating in terms of the time. So it's, um, I guess, these are advantages and there are, however, disadvantages. Now if you are using the flipped classroom within the class, so you're technically you're flipping twice, um, if the students don't bring their um, device that they can access, it can be a bit of an issue. Now, if the, the school provides the device, then that probably does um, does actually get rid of that um, issue. And another issue is that because you're explaining only in one way, if the student had is, um, trouble understanding the first time, they may not be able to, they may not be able to interpret what you actually mean unless you actually go and sit down with them. So I guess the, that's the minor issues that I have actually faced just once. Now one student um, who's been away for about three weeks and I told her to go and watch the video and she came back and said, no, sorry, I didn't understand. So that was, um, I guess in a way, something I, I need to work on in terms of how to explain more clearly and give heaps of examples. And the next one, this one I guess I can just refer to Shambles if he's here. Is he here? Nope. Um, now people watch. Yeah, yes, I, I am. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. So he's, okay, no problem. Um, but people are so used to watching YouTube videos and um, often they just go to a um, YouTube video for instructions. So for example, it could be um, how to tie a tie, or it could be how to clean up certain things, or how to create something, or how to knit, or how to, um, God knows how many um, instruction videos there are. Uh, perhaps um, examples can actually tell us on some of the bizarre instruction videos that he may have to come across. Um, and also students can save the tutorial on their mobile devices. Now, um, we have, um, you told Cam coming up next week and they'll be missing a couple of lessons. Now, um, students came up to me, so what do we have to do um, when we're away on camp? Um, I just said, well, just download all my um, video tutorial onto your mobile device or onto your um, phone and you can take it with you. So that's, once again, is I'm giving them the instructions so that way when they come back, I'm not wasting um, their time, wasting my time and just going through um, the actual application rather than explanation. And that another issue that you could have is that if the students are, um, I guess, motivated enough, they may not actually watch the video, but then I guess it comes, out, comes back the same as um, those students who don't do their homework probably won't um, watch their video. So that, I guess 
those type of students, you'll probably need to uh, negotiate with the parents just to make sure they are uh, being supported. Um, the other one is, I guess, like I mentioned before, students can go back and forth um, from, say, the, the point they have understood to the, the point they haven't understand, or that they haven't understood. And the best of all, they can watch in their own time. And um, so it's kind of like a, a pressing the button and they're summoning the, um, the instant teacher. So before I move on to the actual tools, are there any questions or any comments that it, um, you could share with us? I haven't actually been paying attention to the chat book, so. Hi, Shingo. There's been a lot of talk about the students creating their own videos and being able to use those as resources to help for explanations. Okay, um, I haven't actually got my students to create the videos yet, but I think that is quite important because for them to show their understanding um, by being able to create a video, um, I think it is important as well. So it's, I guess, not in a um, the peer-to-peer -peer mentoring, but um, that is something that I'm looking at doing, um, especially with advanced students. Um, any other comments? Hmm? Okay, I might just move on to the next one. Um, uh, actually, Shingo, just before you do, uh, Daniel yes. asks us you publish your videos anywhere other than the, the school drive. Um, at the moment, um, I only make it, my videos available to my students, and um, the, the location I save them are in box.com, um, simply because it is um, quite easy to access, they can access from the mobile phone, um, and best of all, um, as teachers, you can actually see if the video is being viewed by someone, so it's, it's a great way. Um, to share your resources with your students um, instead of using Dropbox. Um, and Daniel, did you have any questions? Did you type them or? Yes. Okay, um, well, we can come back to the question time later on. Um, so the, the tool, to, uh, two different tools that I'd like to just have a bit of, bit of demonstration. And one of them is very, very easy to use. So I'd like to do a bit of a demonstration how it can be used. Now, um, Shambles is very um, fond of using this on Screencast-O-Matic. Um, it is free to use, and the free version can give you 15 minutes of recording time. And um, although it gives you watermark on the left-hand corner, it is hardly noticeable. Now, some of the free version of the recording device that you get, you get a massive um, white watermark in the middle, which can be quite annoying. This one is not very annoying, and um, it's very easy to ignore. Um, now, the good thing with this is the end result can be uploaded to the, even either their website, which I have never done. You can upload it to YouTube, which I haven't actually done yet. Um, or you can save it as local, of either as MP4 or FLD or AVI or even GIF. Um, so what I usually do is I just go through, um, I don't even do editing anymore. I used to put like a background music and fancy animations, but I found they're taking too much of my time. Um, and then realized the students just wanted to have a bit of information, so I, I ditched the idea of um, using the fancy um, features. Um, so what it actually does is basically it allows you to select a certain area and it gives you 15 minutes of recording time, which I don't actually recommend using up to 15 minutes, especially if you're using this with, say, your 7, 8, 9, or definitely not primary school, um, because it, when the students see the length of the video, if they see 5 minutes, 6 minutes, 8 minutes, they probably won't watch the whole thing. I generally keep it under 3 minutes, um, three minutes is very, very short, and yet you can, you'll be surprised as to how much you can explain within three minutes, um, time limit. So I usually keep it under three minutes, 
with my year seven class, I even keep it under a um, minute or minute and a half, just to take um, set, say everything that I need to say and just um, dump it on the um, the public space the students can access. So that's um, screencast and which I'll um, do a bit of a demonstration a bit later on. And the next one I use, now this is for uh, iPad and Android users, which is called Explain Everything. And I think it's about three Australian dollars. I'm not quite sure how much it is in um, any part of the world, but it's it's not it's certainly not expensive. Um, and if one of the moderators can just um, uh, just look it up on YouTube or on on Google and just paste the, these URLs, that'd be great. And uh, with the explain everything, um, it is very very simple to use, and yet it has so many potentials. Um, it allows you to access your Dropbox and your Box.com, your Evernote, your uh, local drive, and you can just display on the the blank screen, and you can do um, certain things such as uh, just draw directly on it, or you can have a pointers, and the best of all, you can do the recording. So I'll show you uh, how you can use the explain everything to um, affect your classroom as well as providing feedback. So I'd just like to go through a bit of demonstration of the screen cosmetic. Here we go. Now you should see a screen that has a screen cosmetic. Um, could you just give me a smile as you can see the screen? Okay, great. And now with the screen customatic, it's a web-based version. So the, the, what, what you're looking at is a web-based version. And all you have to do is just click on Start Recording. Now, I haven't actually used this, the actual web version on my computer, so I'm not quite sure if it's going to work straight away. And so it just gives you the starting and the Java is blocked on my computer for some reason. So I can't actually show you the web version, but the actual um, the computer version, which you can download. So you can use it on um, your computer when it is not um, connected to the internet. I'm just going to see if I can show you the, the actual hardware version. Okay, now you should be able to see um, to enable pro features, click something, and I don't know if it will work. Now, could you just give me a smile face if you can see a little dotted square, a box? And um, that says SM at SOM. No, no one can actually see. Okay, um, and there's a bit of an issue. So um, I'm not quite sure why it is not happening. So what I'll actually get you to do is actually go to the website. And let's just do a bit of hands-on session. So that's the website that um, allows you to record. Now, my computer has a Java block, so I'll see if I can unblock it in the meantime. And let's see if this will work now. Okay, it's comes up with error on mine, so I'm just going to hope your version is working on your side. Um, now, when you go to the screen customer, you should have and start recording. Now 
that for those on the mobile device, you probably won't be able to see, but you should see um, that the one that says start recording. Actually, good point, Danny. Maybe stopping me from using it simply was I'm using the Java on the Blackboard Collaborate. So um, I'll see if this worked last time. Yeah, um, it probably won't work on this. So a um, bit of a change of plan then. Well, you can probably use it in your own time for that one. Um, so in terms of I'm just going to change something very quickly. Okay, I'll do something a bit different now. Just bear with me for a second. Okay, I'll just show you um, the... I'll show you the iPad um, version. Now you should see my iPad. You can just give me a smiley face um, with the, if I if you can see my iPad screen. Okay, so um, now in terms of the people in the screen, I think um, Jan's probably the only person who can read, and of course B, I think, which is in Jap in Japan, I think. Um, so this is what um, explain everything looks like, and. Now these are basically um, me actually explaining how you actually put the sentence together. So if if I actually put this, um, I can move this around and move this around and so on and so forth. So what I usually do is I, as I explain, um, I go through how to put the sentence together. Now if you have a look at this part, that's the recording part. Now recording um, just starts and whatever happens on your screen as well as on your um, audio it gets recorded so it's, it's a great way for you to um, create a flipped classroom because um, it's extremely simple to, to set up you can physically write with this but unless you have a very very good stylus it's probably difficult to actually write and um, now you can also have the little pointer now, for the for those who would like teach science or um, math, so you can probably up um, upload the actual worksheets, and then you might be able to go through. Now, for those who teach English, you might be able to upload um, the worksheets or some passage, and you might be able to go through um, how to interpret certain parts. Um, so it's it's a great um, tool. Now, I'm just going to go back and show you how this actually works. Now you can either go into your um, box, SkyDrive, and Google Drive, and Evernote, Dropbox, iTunes, and your photo. Um, so you can pretty much select anything. Um, now for the moment, I'm just going to go back and open up a blank screen. Now the good thing with this is that you can just go in and open up any file in your new browser and um, existing sound, video, pictures and so if I go and say um, picture I can actually take a photo of whatever I want now I'm just gonna, I'm not going to do that one for the moment and or you can uh, put a existing photo so what I'll do is let's see if I can look at any of the camera rolls not any access. Now let's say I want this one. And this is um, another um, game I actually use. But let's say done. Now it is now on my explain everything. And as you can see, it actually moves around. Now let's say I want to start recording. So you can see that it's start ticking. You may not see it very clearly, but you can just start writing. And you might just circle and go through, and you might explain all the things that are happening happening in there. Uh, you can also change colors, and so that you can just keep going. And when you're done, you press stop. So it just shows you how um, how much you just recorded. 
that you can upload it to directly to YouTube or you can go into more and go into say uh, Dropbox or um, Evernote or Vimeo even um, and or even PDF. So you can um, just do just the basic things. Um, so let's say I'm just going to put it into Aussie Live and you can press export and you can name it. Um, it takes a bit to convert into um, MP4 so just be prepared to let the uh, iPad running on its own. So that's the and explain everything. Now while I'm actually at it, just want to go back to the room for a second. Now that's the um, explain everything in terms of using in out, out of your classroom, I guess. Now, so how do I use it in my classroom? Now I usually record explanation and grammar structures um, in class as well as out of class. Now some of the students um, need to be um, explain and but what I usually do is I record the explanation so the students can actually see what is actually happening and for those of students who missed the class they can uh, watch the recording later on and um, I encourage my students to actually contribute to discussion while it's recording simply because if I ask questions and when the students are watching they will actually be able to remember. I remember him asking that question. So that um, makes it a bit more interactive as well. And I make the recording available to students and students use the record, recording for revision um, while they're at school as well. Um, now it generally finishes within two or three minutes. Um, so it doesn't go five minutes. I've never actually had any recording go for more than five or six minutes and that was with my year 12. And this is what some of the students said. So I can always go back to the recording. I can watch it over and over again until I understand. I can watch it in my own time. And um, the last one actually made me laugh. Uh, in class I sometimes get distracted but when I watch the recording I can concentrate. So it, I guess it, um, it's I guess a sign that um, the students nowadays they can um, multitask to an extent that they can be watching something and they can be doing something else. Um, so that's the, all about the flipped classroom and now I'm just going to move on very quickly to feeding and um, providing feedback but before I go on are there any comments or questions that people like to share? Uh, Danielle's very kindly sent, uh, sharing the link with us for some of her recordings. It uh, looks like people you have uh, understood your very clear explanation so far. Okay, uh, well Danielle actually uh, um, works with me in my same, class, uh, same school and I actually hand it over to Danielle as to how she used to explain everything because she's um, very fond of using ex explain everything so I'm just going to I don't know if she's got a microphone, but uh, yeah, um, I use it in a few different ways. Um, I've used it as the handwriting practice, which I kind of mentioned in the chat window there. Um, so students who struggle uh, with their stroke order with letters, who do D's and B's backwards, things like that. Um, I've also used it again for my low literacy kids. Um, I made a bit of an audio book, a guided audio book, where I read our class text. I took a photo of the page writing, read it out loud, and underlined the words as I went so that kids could watch that on video and follow along the words as they went. And with Explain Everything, I could save that as a video file or audio only, so they could also listen to that on their MP3 players if they preferred. Um, and I've also used it for um, going through assignments um, so explaining in a bit more detail different parts of the assignments so if the kids aren't sure they can go back and re-listen to that. Um, in future I need to try and keep those videos a bit shorter. In the past I made them far too long and as Shingo said they need to be shorter and as I think uh, Peggy said 
at a one minute per um, grade level is probably a great way to go. Um, the other thing I've done is also used um, rubrics on there. So I've taken a photo or a PDF of um, the rubric that I'm using and then as I mark the student in a particular area, I'll explain um, why I put them there. So if I put them in um, low for the editing section, I might say, uh, I felt that you could have um, edited a bit further, you missed quite a number of commas and full stops. So that's why I put you, um, that's why I put you here and we need to move you further forward. So that's probably um, how I use it. Okay, thank you, Daniel. Um, yes, well, one thing I forgot to mention is that you can probably use for task sheets. Um, I don't know how many teachers um, in this room um, had a student come up to you and say, um, so I don't know what to do for the such, such project. And even though he's, or he or she is holding the task sheet, um, you probably need to sit down with them and explain explicitly. Whereas if you do that in the recording, you can simply um, refer the students to go watch the recording and see if you understand. Um, and if you still don't understand, come and see me. But so you can probably list a couple of the examples as to how you can do. Um, so in a way, it might be spoon feeding to an extent, but I think some of the students who are struggling or who struggle usually in the class, they probably need that much um, guidance um, in order for them to understand. And then I'm just going to move on to the providing feedback, which I guess kind of links to what Danielle said at the end. Now, what I usually do with the explain everything is that I provide a semi-live feedback. Now, what I said semi-live feedback, I just want to show you the next part. Now, this is what one of my students um, in the 12 handed in earlier last year. Now, what I used to do is I just highlight all the um, the grammar structures they have used, and um, I made corrections. And I thought, well, this is isn't this kind of similar to what uh, traditionally is being done, just um, writing down the feedback. Um, and I used this as an um, example simply because I um, used to upload this onto the pub um, student um, accessible shared folder. So the student can actually see their mistakes, but then I thought, hang on, if I could record my actual thought process into this, then they probably understand a lot more than just all these scribble lines and um, crossed out lines. And so what I uh, decided to do is um, actually record my feedback and so the student can actually see the thought process of what I was thinking at the time. Now, it doesn't actually take any longer than if you were to provide feedback in the written form because all you're doing is verbalizing what you're going to be saying or what you're thinking. So um, it's, and I've had quite um, good feedback in terms of what students have said. And um, one of them said it's actually good because it is close to having the real teacher giving me feedback without actually having him there. And another student said, I can watch it over and over again if I don't understand. Now, uh, um, you might be conferencing with a student and uh, giving feedback uh, at the time, but um, with five, ten minutes you spend with the student, it may disappear after a couple of minutes. So it's a good way for you to actually um, record what you have said, and you can probably go back and say, oh, this is what I meant. Because a lot of the time, um, you might be marking 20 or 30 essays, and you never know what, what you've actually said and what you meant. So um, by recording your response, recording your feedback, you can um, just refer to it later on and make it a bit more clear. Um, make it more clear. And uh, this one um, I thought is very appropriate for language teachers is that I can actually hear the correct pronunciation. Um, with the I guess the writing tasks, they don't have to be able to, able to say, but if they're writing up a speech, then if the students can hear what the correct pronunciation is, then it probably makes it a lot easier. And it might be to do with actual, well, it, it, you might be able to do this same thing for, say, um, like the history, or it could be um, the Greek, I don't know, Greek gods. And um, the students have to present, and you're reading their rough draft, 
um, if he can actually say all these um, complicated Greek god names, um, the students can actually hear what it sounds like, which I think is a very, very good way to um, inform them what the um, correct pronunciation is. So that's um, how I use my um, explain everything to um, provide feedback. Um, let's see if I can show you some of the ones. Um, well, obviously the video can't actually play on here, but basically it's it's just this version, and all all I'm doing is just um, just go through what they did wrong, what they did right, and some of the suggestions, and um, the students just watching in semi real time. Um, now, are there any questions in regards to what I've actually said, or maybe thoughts? Um, but I, I think in terms of the, the common things um, with all the second classroom or providing feedback using the screencast technology is that you can, uh, the students can learn at their own time, which I think is the most important part. And the fact that they are able to go back and forth until they understand what you're trying to say. Um, well, unless there are any questions, um, I might just hand it back to one of the moderators. Thank you, Shingo. That was fantastic. And there was a question there of, did you take a photo of student work on the iPad? Uh, now, what I did was uh, I asked the student to take a photo and then send it to me. Um, this one, I think, was a scan copy. And so this, some of the students, they, they don't like um, taking photos. So what I do is they, they give me um, this hard copy and I do the scanning and I put it into the, the public shared folder for them to see. And um, the, the public shared folder I use is called um, box.com. And, and um, the great thing with this is, uh, not to put the, the great thing with this, especially com, try again, um, so the, the good thing with box.com is that um, you get notification every time something gets updated or something changes. Um, and um, uh, the students in my class, my year 12, they can see each other's work, which means they are actually hearing other people's mistakes, which I think is an important part of learning as well, the, the fact that you don't make the same mistakes as others. So it's um, they're able to see others' um, feedback as well as their own. And they are able to apply the knowledge. Um, explain everything that allows you to highlight the mark. Uh, yes, it does. Um, I think there is the, um, the function where you can change colors and you can change the uh, different types of pen. So you, I'll just show you um, very quickly. So this is um, the one I had. Uh, actually, this is a different one. And you can change the colors by going there. You can change the opacity as well. Um, so if I make it, say, this type of color, you can also change the width, and you can change the tip as well. So for example, if you want to make it more of a highlighter, you can do this. Um, which is probably not very visible, so might so something like this. So it's probably um, uh, worth three dollars, two dollars, and the year she's spending. Um, any other question? We've done explained everything while I'm at this. Nope. 
Okay, I'm just gonna come back to the room. Um, now here is my contact detail. If um, you need to contact me, or if you'd like to be included in the email list that I run every Thursday night, uh, which is the Australian time. Okay, now, um, um, well, if there are any, any questions, I might um, just stop the recording. And well, thanks very much for coming, and hope you picked up some few ideas.